So everybody else assigned in. Very, very good. Okay, well, hello everybody on screen. Let's see if there's anybody on there. There's people on there. It's great to know. All right, so Kristen's not here, so we're just completely out of control because she keeps us all in line. And Pam had a little uh, personal thing that came up today, so we're really out of control. <laughs> so um, our our guest our guest that always does our icebreakers isn't here either. So it's just one of those great days, right? I think the weather is great and all those great stuff. So um, one of the things that I, I do recognize though is we got a lot of people in the room that are, are new. So as, as, as opposed to doing an icebreaker because I just keep, I don't have anything off the cuff, I can do all kinds of things that we probably shouldn't do. So how about we just go around the room and introduce ourselves to let us know what your, you know, if you're a provider, county board, or what it is you do, and your name or stuff, and just so that everybody has a good face with the name. I'm Kyle Miller. I'm the director of provider and community resources here at the Fairfield County Board of DD. I'm Kim Conrad. I'm an agency provider. Um, <coughs> Wave of homes. That's what I can say. <laughs> <coughs> David Baum. I'm the director of services and supports here at Fairfield DD. Good morning. I'm Venetia Barlow. I'm a service coordinator. Uh, I'm Austin Hicks. I'm a program development representative for BioQuest. I'm Elizabeth Evans. I'm also an ISC here at the Council. Nicole Barksdale. I'm the Samaritan agency provider. I'm Devon Ray, agency provider with the Samaritan. I'm operations director. <coughs> I'm Lisa Chandler. I'm with THS Remote Support Services. Uh, Monica Cooperator. I work for the County Board. I work in the Resource Management Department. Tyler Cordell from the Employment ISC. I'm Andrea Spires. I'm a Program Officer at the Hamilton County Foundation. I'm Rachel McCoy, Community Connections Coordinator at the Board of DD. I'm Leslie Dancho. I am the Community Support Manager here for the County Board. And I'm Laura Furry. I'm an ISC at the County Board. So welcome everybody. I'm glad we have a nice mix of people from the County Board Provider World and all the other stuff. So um, I'm glad Andrea introduced herself because I wasn't sure of her name. Last <laughs> season. Um, we're really glad that Andrea's coming in. So David told me you guys split and you're going to go first. Is that right? I believe so. That's yeah. fantastic. So if you remember way back, I don't know, maybe three months ago or maybe even longer, we had, those of you over here, we had this dumpster fire on the screen, uh, up on our whiteboard. And so we talked about, you know, the dumpster fire is kind of the result of our system just kind of, in, instead of ever fixing the problem, they just kind of put layer upon layer upon layer, and we just kind of, that we are where we are, right? And one of the things that we talked about, some of our speakers that have been here before talked about, you know, one of the things that continues to perpetuate the dumpster fire is us being, um, I hate to use the word, but I'll use it anyway, hostage to the system. I think as long as we have to meet um, all the requirements that we have to the funding, you know, it kind of keeps us always doing what the system tells us. And the system, as we've seen, has, has gotten better, but it hasn't gotten to where I think the best case scenario is support. So we talked a lot, we talked an awful lot about um, alternative funding sources. And so we asked Andrew if you could come in and talk to us about some of those types of things. Anything else that you want to talk about? And we'll talk a lot, I guess. I know. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Thank so, you so much for coming. Yeah. Um, I was here a few months ago, like he had said, and I'm going to kind of go over a little bit of the same things again, just because I think there's probably new people in the room. So I do have a presentation. I think you're going to do a pull up for me, please. Yeah. I just talked to you about it literally two seconds ago. Okay. <laughs> you're right. That's how my brain works, too. Like, in one year, not the other. Because <laughs> there's too many things going on. I'm trying to do too many things at once. So I've been with the foundation since August. Before that, I was with United Way. So um, when I was at United Way, I did have to write grants and find funding for programming. Now that I'm at the foundation, uh, people write grants to us to get funding. So I kind of have both sides of that, which is kind of nice. So um, I'm with the Fairfield County Foundation. And you want to go to the next slide. So some of the different funding sources besides Medicaid that you can look into are grants, fundraisers, and sponsorships. So. Um, Okay. So grants, there's lots of different types of grants. A lot of them are available for nonprofits. There are some that are out there for um, businesses or those that are for profit. Those are more difficult to find, but there are some out there. Um, at the foundation specifically, our grants are for nonprofits and we don't do overhead or salaries, which I know those are the two of the big things that you're looking to fund. However, we do things like 
um, if you want to buy items to do a project or if you're looking to do um, like an event or things like that. Those are kind of more of the things that we fund. Um, and then sometimes with local or state or federal, those are ones that you could go as like a business or a for-profit entity to get funding. Um, there's a community development block grant, which is um, there's availability for businesses. So that's one to look into. And I do have a list of grant opportunities. Um, I can just pass those around right now. These are just other grants that we're aware of um, that are kind of open to Skull County. So you can pass those around. I don't know if I have enough. I think they're kind of like 15. So um, my goal as like being someone that people come to for funding is if we can't fund them, hopefully share with them other resources that are out there. So these are just kind of a collection of ones that um, I either written to when I was at United Way or I know that are just a specific from other county. county. Um, so I would definitely look into them. If, if you are, if you're a nonprofit, for sure look into them. And if you're a for-profit, there are some on there that you could potentially write to. Sorry, I was no, not good. sharing to the people on. Yeah, they would like to see it. Yeah, yeah. sorry about Thank that. You. Guys on Zoom. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. You're, you're welcome. So, and then, let's see. Has anybody in here written a grant before? Oh, who did you write? I did, a, I used to work for Community Action. Oh, okay. And I did their um, grant writing for the program that I work for. So that's probably a big grant. It, was it for, um, to like federal government? Yeah, it was for the Recycling Litter Prevention Education Yeah, program. And those can be much more in depth and detail. There's a lot <laughs> that are out there like that, that are federal or um, state or local that are very, can be overwhelming, but then there's the smaller ones that are maybe either foundations that are a business foundation or like your art foundation that are not as overwhelming, that are pretty um, simple and straightforward. And the best recommendation to be, I would give you is if you're thinking about writing a grant, is reaching out and talking with them because they're just people and they want to build a relationship with you and see if it's a good fit and they'll help you through that process. Whoops, sorry. That's okay. I think we're good. We can go there now. Um, so the next thing that I talked about last time was fundraising. So that was just something that if you're not a nonprofit and there's less options out there for you and you're trying to find funding, you can do a fundraiser. So, um, you know, like Chipotle, raising hands, things like that, you can do a fundraiser through them um, to go for a specific, whatever you're trying to find extra funding for. Um, you can get an item and sell it. Um, you could do a raffle or 50-50 or run or a walk. Um, a lot of businesses like to get their name on the back of events to get their name out there. If you can get a lot of people rallied around something, um, they're, they're willing to give you money, and that's going to be unrestricted dollars that you can use for salary, you can use for overhead, you can use for whatever you need, um, or any type of other events like a, a community night or things like that. Andrea, when you do a, a fundraiser that is a chance, like 50 50, or anything, do you have to have a different type of you know, the certification. Do you have to have something in place in order to do that type of funding? I, I'm not sure. I think if you look at it as a, uh, as a donation, uh -huh. then I think you can get around those things. Okay. I think that's how you can get around Okay. <laughs> okay. So right. I think potentially there could be, um, depending on how large the event is and that kind of thing, okay. there could be rules in place that you have to follow. I'm not as familiar with all of those. Okay. But I think when you call it a donation, yeah. then that's how you get around those okay. things. Yeah. Okay. Um, you can also use like different skills. So if you have clients that have skills that maybe they can sew or they can, you can have a car wash or things like that. You can, those are can be skills that you can do as a fundraiser. Anybody have any examples of you can think of that you could do as a fundraiser? No? Okay, so we'll go to the next slide and see if anything comes to mind. Um, and then sponsorships, that's kind of, with events, you can get sponsorships. You can also just get sponsorships for your business. Um, if someone wants to put their name with your name, um, potentially they'd be willing to give you those dollars to use as a match. And you can use that whatever you need to use it for. They wouldn't have any, like saying you can't use it for um, salary or overhead, that kind of thing. And then there's also civic organizations. So if you're like, I want to do this this particular thing with, with my clients or with my, the individuals that I work with, um, if it's if it aligns with their mission, they might be willing to give you funding. So like Kiwanis is a, is for youth. Like we would like to support youth. So if it's something that you are looking at students to try to do something that um, would benefit them, Kiwanis might be a go for them too. Um, there's charity movies. They like to do a lot of things with families. Um, there's referral groups, professional groups. 
there's faith-based faith -based groups. So a lot of churches have funding that they're looking to put out in the community. So if you have a need, uh, sometimes it's just talking with the church and saying, this is, this is what we're looking for. Are you willing to support that? A lot of times they'll be able to help with that as well. Um, okay, next slide, please. No. <laughs> He's thinking. Maybe. Um, you can also set up an endowment. So at the foundation, a lot of organizations set up endowments with us. So it, it's an example like Big Brothers Big Sisters has an endowment at the foundation where people can donate money to that fund to be used for that organization. So if you set up an endowment for your organization, um, you can. That's a nonprofit. We are we are the nonprofit so that we can be the five hundred one c three for that donation, and then you use those funds for whatever that mission is with your with your business or your organization. And then another thing to think about is if you can't find funding, if they want to do it, if someone you work with wants to do a particular event or um, wants to learn more about something, volunteering is a really great way to get out there. Uh, I know I've done that in the past, like at the festival, like if I didn't necessarily want to have to buy a ticket, if I volunteer at the event, I can still be at the event, still watch the concert, but I didn't have to pay for that ticket. So like, I know OSU, you can volunteer to be um, the people that see or at the Clippers game, things like that. So that's a great way to kind of get involved and not have, you don't have to find funding for that, but you can still be there and be a part of the event without having to find funding to pay for it. Um, also, you can look into, the, there's a lot of free events around town all of the time. The library has a lot of good events. Um, a lot of different organizations put things on throughout the year. So just be aware and looking out for those. That's really a good way to um, do things that would otherwise cost. You know, it's uh, maybe not always something that's right up someone's alley, but if you look and see what's out there, I'm sure you can find something that kind of really aligns. Um, and again, if there's an event that costs something, sometimes you can work at that event to get in for free and not have to pay for it. Okay. And then another thing would be swapping skills. So if maybe you need marketing and you have a particular set of skills that you can swap with a marketing company, Maybe you could do that, and that way you don't have to find funding to pay for your marketing, something like that. A lot of times, um, businesses are willing to do that because a lot of small businesses don't have a lot of funding for whatever they might. Maybe you have a skill to, like tech, I don't know, something like that, and you could swap. So that's another way to kind of think outside the box. Um, you can also maybe if you have a skill, you can like lead a group and you know offer like a luncheon or something that you could teach to somebody else. And then go to the next slide. You can do um, find ways to have other earned income, such as selling items, a yard sale, or selling things online. Um, maybe working with clients if there's something that there's a goal that they're working for, if they have things that they want to get rid of and they could sell um, to raise funds that way. That's another way to kind of um, think outside the box that maybe you have more opportunity to do now because of the online options of selling things. And then you can also um, work with government entities or nonprofits to write grants. So if you are that business that's not a nonprofit, but you want to write a grant, if you partner with another organization that is eligible, then potentially you could be able to write that grant and get that fund funding to do what you're looking to do. And then an example of that would be, um, so Kiwanis um, is not a 501c3. So when we built the park, if you're familiar, there's a park on um, 22 in Lancaster, Hunter Park. We worked with friends of the park because they are 501c3. So they were able to write all of the grants to make that park come to fruition. Um, so they wrote grants to the Fairfield County Foundation, to the Columbus Foundation, and other organizations to get that funding. Um, but otherwise, wouldn't have happened if they didn't partner with the friends of the park, 501c3. Um, another thing that's kind of happening nowadays is um, influencing. So if you're good at social media, there's potentially ways to earn income that way as um, promoting brands and working with brands to get funding coming in that way. So um, it may be not everyone's hour to do that, but it is a way that people are making income in a different way and promoting your business online is a good way to do that. Um, and again, those free events, just wanted to highlight that again. Um, but looking into things that are already happening, happening, don't re reinvent the wheel and um, you know, look out in the community. There's like things like little free libraries. So if someone really likes to read, but they don't have 
you know, money to go buy books, that kind of thing, look at those few libraries or the regular library, um, look into groups and building those community. You know, when you have people that are supporting you outside of your organization, they're going to give you ideas that you may not have thought of otherwise. And then um, how I, last time, I just really wanted to emphasize collaboration because when you work with a lot of people and they know what you need and you know what they need, you should be able to, you can be able to support them and support each other. Um, in ways that you might have not thought otherwise. Um, and it really helps build that community and builds uh, everyone gets stronger. A rising tide lifts all ships, so it helps everyone do well. And so now, if you don't mind, um, if you want to just take a few minutes and think of an individual that you already work with or support and kind of think of other ways that you could help fund um, something that they're interested in or something that you're trying to work on. So you can work together in groups if you want or do that individually. Um, just take like five or 10 minutes and then hopefully everyone will, will be willing to go around and kind of tell us what you were thinking about. So go ahead. Um, I also am going to pass these around. This is just uh, the Fairfield County Foundation's grant schedule. So if you're interested in writing a grant foundation, we did a it's like a family, and we were like the whole community we did. It was like a, we had a parent of that, and she's a really good person. So she did like a, a and so it was like everybody got to do yeah Yes, depending on what you're doing. 
classes or grants a format or is it a summary you write up like begging pleading persuading your cause like so a lot of it like there's similar um information that's asked but they're all a little different mm -hmm. there was there is i don't know if they're doing it again but there was just one recently at oul that they had it was open to the public anyone could come to it it was a great writing oh, informational okay. session so if that happens again i'll make sure to get it to them to spread out to everybody okay. here um, hopefully they'll do that again. I mean, they had 90 people show up, so I think it was really well received. So I think hopefully they'll plan that again since it was highly successful. Okay. Um, but a lot of times they are asking for like 
what the cost is, what cost you already, you know, um, already maybe already raised and what we're looking for. How many people is going to serve? A lot of times it's impact. So if it's only going to serve one or two people and it's hundred thousand dollars, probably not going to happen. But if it's right. going to serve a thousand people, maybe that's a bigger impact. And if it's going to last a long time, that's also a bigger impact. Um, something that's going to be able to use over and over again like that is probably going to be more successful for a grant. Yeah, that's good. Um, anybody else? Go ahead. So it wouldn't necessarily, you know, go for the brand. But we actually did a fundraiser. Uh, we had an event at our one of our day programs uh, with the goal to raise enough money to um, have an outing at the uh, Pro Football Hall of Fame and the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Mm -hmm. um, so we did like a, we had an artist that came in and did like a paint therapy thing in our program. So we invited the public to come in. Um, and it was like we had everybody make a, a, a goodie bag that was handed out to everybody that, that kind of came in. So we did actually get enough people that we have uh, bought tickets for everybody to go to the That's great. Uh, the outings. Awesome. Yeah. Right, cool. yeah. One thing I just wanted to mention too, sometimes um, I think it's like, well, I don't know, remember if it's like once a quarter or just twice a year, the county library does grant writing courses. Mm -hmm. And those are also free as well. Yeah. I think it's like a six week thing, and you really have to sign up and be dedicated to actually attend, or your spot will be taken. They also have free online courses you can do at your own pace, too. That reminds yeah. me that you can log into, I forget what the, but if you just go to the Careful County Library website mm -hmm. and search their like online education, you can look for like grant um, education and take those. Those mm -hmm. are at your own pace. So, you get a little certificate at the end, too. Nice. Um, Rachel had said back, she reminded me that the library also had a lot of free passes. So they have passes for the works, um, Dawes Arboretum, Franklin Park Conservatory, AHA, different things like that. So those are another place to take advantage of those that you can use those and not have to spend any spend anything on going to those different organizations that otherwise are, can be kind of expensive. And um, we think the Columbus Metropolitan Library also has like COSI and the um, Columbus Museum of Art. So definitely look into other library um, systems around the area that you can just get a library card to and have access to those. So when you write a grant and if you receive grant money, mm -hmm. like what kind of follow, I mean, follow along, follow up did they do to be like, oh, you spent that money on what you said you were going to. So typically there's a final grant report. So after the project is completed that you just fill out with, okay, this is how much we spent which is like, hopefully it's all of the dollars that you received. And um, this is what we did, and this is how many people we impacted, and this is, you know, the long-term effects of this, um, these dollars and what they're gonna do for the community. Some of the government grants have more reporting, so those can be a little more overwhelming. Sometimes they're quarterly or semi-annually, um, asking for more detail, um, but that's just true of anything with the government right there. More, more information needed. <laughs> We had to do a lot of, we did quarterly reporting through community action and it was a um, database. So I think it's you know, Well, there, it's, this was more of a personal thing. There was like a person I know of oh. in <laughs> my personal side of life that uh, people have said fishy things about grant money that he's received. And I've, I've often wondered like, well, how does he get away with tracked, you know, continuously getting grants and I mean, some the organizations things that are supposed to be happening with them. Like, yeah. <laughs> some have less requirements, like some private foundations may just give you the dollars to give them all the information up front and they might not have any reporting at the end, um, but there's not a lot like that. So you might just be fluffing it. Just saw this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hopefully not. <laughs> How about anybody else have any examples? I know you said you think Aaron's on, online on Zoom. Aaron, do you have um, want to talk about the food trucks and things that you guys have been doing as fundraisers? What do you want me to say? <laughs> <laughs> Tell us how great the food trucks have been as fundraisers for the center. Well, they've been doing, they've been wonderful. Well, um, I think our first one was Schmidt's Sausage. They came in and it was very well received and According to them, that was their largest fundraising event. Wow. For anybody. Um, we've had them come in again one more time, I think. It didn't do so well, but I think the weather was bad that day. Mm -hmm. um, and we've had a few other small mom and pop type food trucks come in. 
but we've got other ideas too that we're going to throw out and we've been well we're they've been thrown out but we just have to get the ball rolling on those so but how does the fundraiser work with the food trucks? Do they give you like percentage of the food sold or? Yes, yes. I forget, I forget what those those numbers are, but uh, I think for like a four hour day, we made several hundred bucks. Right, and you didn't have to do anything, right? They just show up. They well, we did some advertising. Just advertising. Uh, yeah, we did um, uh, social media, uh, and uh, some we put some signage out around the community so, yeah. but that was that was it just yeah. just our facebook posts and i think the signage we only did like a day or two beforehand so yeah seems pretty successful yeah it was great it, it's definitely one of our going to be one of our go-to things now awesome. um so yeah thanks hey aaron while you got the floor why don't you fill in where i left off why do you guys feel like you need to do some um, alternative funding at the center day program? Well, to put it short, because the state funding sucks. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, um, we because right now the changes that we're going through, um, we've got individuals who aren't so happy. So their days have kind of gone a, down a few in attendance but those are changing that we're having more conversations with them now and they're coming back but we we just need more external funding to support the things that we're doing to get out in the community to, you know to let the world know that these people are people and you know however we do that you know going forward i think that's going to be and this is just my opinion it's going to be a lot depending a lot aside from the state and if you know in the future which i see happening if we could just do away with medicaid on our end that would be great thank you is that what you wanted to hear sure is <laughs> can, I cash, can i cash that check now yes <laughs> anybody else online have anything that would like to share is there anything in the chat earlier just talking about other stuff on there no is there something well, does anybody else have any other questions or thoughts? Um, might I, uh, sorry. I did forget that coming up, we've also partnered with uh, Raising Canes and Chipotle. So that's the new new arena for us. So, yeah. but so those, those options too. Definitely. Those ones are, again, just putting it out there, really. That's yeah, all the work that's, we have to do. Uh, that's a no work on our part other than social media sharing. So I went last night to Chipotle for the Bloom Carol Music Sisters. Mm -hmm. They get 33% from Chipotle for everybody that shows up. So um, it's a pretty easy fundraiser. Um, any other questions? Well, it's, it's like Amazon. I, I can't remember what it is, but something with Amazon and Kroger both will have. Well, kind of Amazon is ending their program. Yeah, well, I didn't need to say that. Like but Kroger, Kroger <laughs> yeah. But Kroger does. Um, what else? I think. Uh, five and below, you can do one with them for like a whole month long. If people just say they're there for your organization, you can get a percentage. Um, but yeah, Kroger definitely does. You just sign up and it automatically, you don't have to do anything else. But every time you shop, a percentage goes to that organization. I want to know what you got to do to get back on Honda support. And then something you know, yeah. advertised all the time. I feel like they pick and choose who they want to yeah. support. But, you know, building that relationship right. is how you get that support. And a family member that works. Well, there you go. You guys know that. Tell them to start putting a good name in it. Yeah. Yeah. Buy a car. Yeah. yeah. They will, they'll call you all the time. Uh -huh. <laughs> that is true. Mm -hmm. But just getting more involved in the community and having folks involved. Um, a lot of folks in the center are now coming to Kiwanis, which, you know, now they've built all these relationships with people that they wouldn't have met otherwise. And, you know, if there's something that they're interested in, we may have somebody that knows that skill or knows that thing that they could potentially help them with. So it's all about that relationship building and being more involved in the community, I think, too, not only like actual dollar wise, but also just having people to support support these folks as well. Okay. Well, if you have any other questions, my email's at the bottom of that sheet. Um, feel free to email me or reach out. But um, thanks for having me. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Andrea. Yeah.
Uh, we try to get Andrea as often as we can. She's just awesome. Um, so, you know, if, for those of you that haven't been here a lot, and you guys think are pretty new, one of the things we talked a lot about is Aaron's crystal ball and my crystal ball. And, you know, is, is the system sustainable the way it is? We know it's not, right? I mean, else we're talking about, I mean, everything you hear about right now with the state of Ohio budget is, hey, we got to have more funding for the DSP crisis, right? And, and not just the DSP, but for all providers. So we know that there's problems going on, but one of the things that like we've talked with Aaron a lot about is if you're just doing, then in their case, it's day program and transportation, but if you're just doing uh, day, day pro, day, adult day support, you know, if you want to take somebody out one-on-one, you're going to lose money because of the ratios and so forth. So we try to we try to talk about if there are other ways that we can support or maybe generate revenue so that you can have enough dollars that you can pay for a person to go, maybe only four hours a day because you're going to go out one-on-one with people or different things like that. So we're looking at different ways to try to get people, as, as Andrea said, more into the community, more um, to live their lives kind of like we live our lives because we just know that the way the system is, is not like any other thing in the world. It's a kind of a medical institutional model and that's kind of where we are today and um, where we know we're headed because there's no change in sight. And you know, we talk about all the changes in the rules and the rules change, they strike a, a word and change the word. That's the rule changes, you know? Um, if you look at the rules of EDM, whether it's ADS or HPC or, or even vocational habilitation, they're all about people becoming more and more independent, increasing their skill level, increasing their abilities, living their lives more independently. And, but then the funding doesn't support that. And so I know that we talk about that as, as a matter of fact, I'm involved a lot with the Blueprint Committee, which was supposed to have had things done in 19, or 2019. Um, and then somebody said something about a pandemic or something. So that kind of got derailed, but we're still talking about it, still adapting to those things. But we still come back to the same conversation and say, if we're going to change the rules, we've got to do it right. So now we're talking about simplifying the waivers, right? So how do those things go together? And I'm telling you, work with people at the, all those different levels, whether it's the provider world or the county board level or the department level or you throw healthcare in there. It's like it's trying to get, you know, it's, 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 almost, it's like turning the Titanic. It's really a challenge. But because, um, you know, everybody has a different um, push list that they want. So... We continue to try it in Fairfield County Board of DBE and in this meeting uh, regularly. And kind of the providers, our focus is how do we help people that we support live more and more independently, live more and more like we do. And so that's why we've talked a lot about some of the things that Andrew can talk about. Um, so just kind of wanted to bring you up to speak. We, that's kind of our common theme. Uh, is there anything else for that discussion? We'll take a little break before David comes. Um, if not, our discussion, we'll just get free time until we, we see our next speaker, which has, I, What's his last name? <laughs> <laughs> so when he gets here, I'll introduce him because I just will have fun with that. <laughs> I, have a little, I have a couple minutes. Are you ready? Yes. All right. Well, it's my pleasure to introduce our superintendent. He's going to come and talk a little bit about foundations of leadership. Um, this is what somebody wrote down, so I'm going to read this. Someone wrote this down? You don't want me to I don't know. Great leadership, is, great leadership is built on great foundation. During this session, David will discuss, did you write this? I did. Okay. We'll discuss different levels of leadership and illustrate the need for leaders to continue growing, learning, and developing their influence. Because leadership is influence. Well, you just blew the whole thing. I know. I thought I'd do that for you. So, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Mr. David O'Rourke, superintendent. Thank you. Well, it's great to be back with you again. I see some uh, familiar faces around us, so I'm happy to have the opportunity to come and talk with you about leadership. I was here a few months ago. We talked about change, and uh, I know that resonated with a number of people because we continue to be in the midst of significant change in our personal lives, in our organizational lives, in our system, with people that we're supporting. And so uh, today we're going to talk a little bit, as Kyle said, about this idea of leadership and how leadership works and the fact that we really have to continue to grow in our leadership every single day because what we'll talk about later on in the presentation is that there's this lid and it's actually called the law of the lid and the law of the lid says that you can't go any higher nor can your team members or the people you support go any higher than your leadership level, whatever it is today. So whatever that whatever that leadership level is, there's a lid. And you can't take people any higher than you are. You can't lead people any further than you have gone. And so that's why we're focused on this today, because we have to continue to grow. We have to continue to learn and develop ourselves so that we're getting better every day. And so as we talk about this, we, we so, sort of start out with this idea. And some of you 
maybe have been in a presentation like this before or even seen this presentation with me before, but it's sort of the audience participation time where we say, well, how would you define leadership? What would you say leadership is? Audience participation. Influence. <laughs> Rachel has seen the presentation before. <laughs> hey, there was dead silence, you know? I don't have a problem with dead silence. I would have waited about 30 seconds more, but, but that's okay. Rachel is absolutely right. There are a lot of things that people will say that leadership is, and there are a lot of different characteristics of leadership and a lot of different principles of leadership, and all of those things play in to a definition. But at its core, foundationally, if we were to spend some time trying to define leadership, my thing's not worth it. Not working here either. I don't know what you want me. <laughs> One moment, please. Yeah, some people may just. So, should I share it now, though? Now that you can. Yeah, I don't think so. Seems like we're having some problems. So, leadership is influence. And at the end of the day, it's nothing more and nothing less than that. Leadership is influence. It's taking people from where they are to where they would not ordinarily go on their own. And as we talked about last time in the change session, as we talk about right now in this session, you are leaders. And you say, well, I don't supervise anyone. I don't have anyone who's under me. I don't have anyone who, you know, works for me. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not really a leader. But we have to understand that that's not what leadership truly is. Leadership is really about influence. And because it's about influence, you're a leader. Because you have influence over friends, over family members, over, um, you have influence with people that you support and their family members and guardians. You have influence in the community or at some nonprofit maybe that you volunteer at. You have influence with your coworkers and peers. And at its core definition, because you have influence, you are a leader. So what we have to understand is leadership's not a position. It's not about the fact that I'm in this leadership position, that's not what it's about. It's a process. Leadership is a process. It's not about management. It's not about supervision. It's something different. It's about that relationship, which allows you to have influence. It deals with people and with dynamics. It's always moving forward. Leadership's always moving forward. And if there's anything you take from today, I hope it's this idea that you're a leader. Because regardless of your position, you have influence, and that makes you a leader. So what we're going to go through here relatively quickly, uh, and this is from a book by John Maxwell called The Five Levels of Leadership. We're going to focus in on these five levels. And as we focus in on the five levels, each one of these builds on the next. And we realize that if we're going to grow our leadership, if we don't want to get stopped by that leadership lid, we have to continue to grow and to develop, or else we get stuck and that's no place we want to be. And so the first level of leadership where anyone starts is about positional leadership. And you say, well, leadership isn't about position. Well, it's not. Or at least it can't be long term. You can't stay here. But this is where everyone starts. At some point, you get a position. You get put into a position in an organization, or you have a position in your organization, and people follow you because they have to, because you're the boss, because it's the position. So we all start out here, but very, very quickly, we have to move on from here. We cannot stick around in the positional leadership because we don't want people to follow us because they have to. We want people to follow us for a different reason. And so it is the age old boss versus leader illustration where we say, yes, we start here. And yes, technically people have to listen to you because you're the boss. And yes, if they want to keep their job and if they want to you know, uh, continue to come to work every day, well, then yes, based on your position, people have to listen. But there's a difference between the boss who's sitting up on top of the desk, 
having the people that report to that person pull them along, pull the mission along versus the boss being out in front as the leader leading people as they move the mission forward. And so we all start out here. There's nothing wrong with beginning here. We all begin somewhere. But very quickly, we must move to the second level of leadership if we really want to make a difference. And when we talk about this idea of boss versus leader, you can see some of the characteristics. A boss thinks they know everything, but a leader is always willing to learn. A boss criticizes, but a leader is there to coach and to encourage. A boss directs, but a leader coaches. A boss focuses on themselves, but a leader focuses on the team. And so I hope you're quickly getting a sense of, of what the difference is here when we talk about level one leadership, this position where, yes, technically I'm the boss and people have to follow me. But we realize that we want to move on to the next level, which is all about permission. It's about relationship. So this level, the second level, level of leadership, people follow you because they want to. People follow you because they want to follow you because you have shown them that you care for them and about them. You begin to build a relationship with them. It's not so much that you're the boss anymore, but people are starting to see you're open and transparent. You're interested in listening. You want to help them move forward. And they move from this idea of, man, I just got to follow this guy or I just got to follow this lady because they're in charge to, hey, I'm getting a sense that this person really does care for me. They care about my future. They care about what's happening in my life. Now, I'm talking about a relationship because if you're going to have influence with someone, you have to have a relationship. You can't really influence people that you have that you don't have a relationship with. It's very challenging to long-term influence someone where there's no relationship that exists. This is built on relationship, but not friendship. It's not what we're talking about. So don't confuse the two as you're leading your teams. We're not talking about being friends with those who you who you work with and lead. And, and maybe some of you are friends with those people, but what we what we have to have is a relationship, a professional working relationship that helps people understand that you are there for them, that you are there for the organization, for the mission, to do the work that we've been called to do. It's not about me, but it's about the team. And so we build this relationship and we begin to get permission to lead. They will let you lead them because you're developing a relationship, because they know and can tell and see that you care. But we can't stay there. So moving from level one to level two is great and we need to do it and we need to do it quickly because we can't be effective at level one. But we can't be as effective as we could be even at level two. So we have to move from this idea of permission-based leadership or relationship to where we actually start getting some stuff done. We gotta produce at some point, right? We've got a job to do. Now we're in the people business. We're not building widgets. We're not selling insurance. We're not selling houses, but there is work to be done. We have to produce at some point. And so the third level is about production. It's about results. People follow you because you help them see that together as a team, we can accomplish some unbelievable things. And so we have to move then to this third level of leadership where we begin to not only have those individual relationships, but we can start to have relationships with the entire team. And by the way, you say, well, maybe I'm an independent writer, I only have one person, but you're working with people and you're working with families as you support them. And so we start to work together as a team as you build those relationships to provide the support and to achieve the outcomes that are meaningful in people's lives that we're working with. And so we have to, again, move, but, but there's really no stopping. There's this continual development as we move forward. And as we move, as we're trying to do something, as we're making changes, as we're leading forward, we realize there are three different types of people in the world in every organization, in departments, in units, whatever the case may be, three different types of people. Momentum makers, who are positive people in nature, trying to move things forward, trying to make things happen. There are momentum takers, people who are just treading water. They're not helping you, they're not hurting you, 
they're just there, sort of taking up space, right? And then you have the momentum breakers. Those are the negative people, the people that are not just treading water, but they are actively engaged in whatever you're not. So they're against you, and they're working against you, and they're trying to suck that momentum that you're building as a leader out of the room, out of the organization, out of the life that you're trying to move forward. And so we have to be cognizant that these three things exist and work to recognize them and deal with them as leaders as we move forward. But we can't say, even in level three. So being level two is better than one, three is better than two. And, and by the way, as we move up the pyramid through these levels, you never lose the lower level. So you're developing and growing, but you're still boss. You're still down here in the position, right? You've built the relationships. You've done the hard work. Now we've talked about how we're developing the team together to produce results and make things happen. And as we go then to level four, it's about people development. It's about reproduction. It's about the idea that the greatest legacy that any person, that any leader can leave is reproducing themselves as a leader in others. And so as we think about that idea, we're starting to say, I'm following you. People begin to follow you because of what you're doing for them. So it's not about the organization, the team of production anymore, but it's about how the leader begins to invest individually in the development of each person. <clears throat> and so we realize that this is an important level because we know that leaders know the way, show the way, and go the way. And because they do, we can identify people in our sphere of influence who need to be developed, who maybe are working to lead themselves, but they're down at level one. They're down at level two. They need to move. If they're going to be effective and move up the pyramid, we've identified who those people are, and we're working to reproduce leadership in those people so that they can continue on and lead with effectiveness. Ralph Nader said the function of leadership is to produce more leaders, not more followers. You know, leaders need leaders. <clears throat> There's an old saying that goes something like this. If the leader is out taking a walk and they're trying to lead their followers and there's no one behind them, then all they're really doing is taking a walk. They're not leading at all because there's no one there for them to follow. There's no one there for them to develop into the leaders that we need as we continue forward and as our system continues forward, as our organizations continue forward, because we're all not gonna be here one day. And so because of that, how can we invest in others and reproduce our leadership in them so that things can continue on, so that we can leave that legacy of leadership even after we're gone. It's about working with people and giving them a hand up. It's about developing them so that they can lead effectively, just like you're working to lead effectively. And then the fifth level is all about respect. It's they follow you because of who you are, what you represent. It's not so much about what you've done for the organization, what you've done for them as an individual, what you've done with the team, but top level pinnacle leadership, which is few leaders get to. It's, it's few and far between that we see level five leaders, but it's all about the culmination of all those things. People following you because of who you are, what you've done for them and the organization and the team. It's a cumulative, comprehensive sort of view of everything that you have become as a leader. It's about appreciation and respect. George Foreman says, without appreciation and respect for other people, true leadership becomes ineffective, if not impossible. And so we realize that leadership is so important. We realize that we need to be solid, growing, developing leaders, not stuck in any one of those areas. Now, if you're working in an area and you're working to develop yourself, it's okay if you're at level two or you're at level three and you're growing and developing to move up to that next level. It takes time. None of this is automatic. 
It takes time to build relationships. It takes time to work with teams and team dynamics to get people to begin to produce. It takes time for you to develop other leaders as we move up through two and three and four levels of leadership. And so don't think that I'm here today and tomorrow I'm going to be a level three leader. It, it, it takes investment and purpose and time to make these happen. But we have to keep moving. We have to keep growing. So let me ask you a question. You're here and we're working through this. That's great. What else are you doing? What is your personal leadership development plan? Do you have a leadership development plan? What are you doing to grow as a leader? What books are you reading? What courses are you taking? What conferences and seminars and workshops are you going to? And, and there's the technical part of that. We go to some of these things and learn about how to better support people that we're working with or learn new rules or uh, administrative code or new techniques or new strategies, and that's all great. But what about the leadership part? What about the part where we're actually working and influencing people? How are you growing in that area? How are you developing that? Because we know a number of things. One, there is a dearth of leadership in the world. We see managers, we see supervisors. We don't always see leaders who are truly leading with influence and making a difference. And we realize that as we talk about this, this gap between management and leadership, that we manage projects. People don't want to be managed. People want to be led. So we manage projects, but we lead people. When people feel they're being managed like a project, they comply out of obligation. In other words, we're back down at that level one leadership where they follow because they have to, not because they want to. And so we can't manage people. We have to lead them. When people feel they're being led, they follow you because you inspire them. You inspire them to something greater than themselves. You inspire them to move toward the mission. You inspire them to grow and to develop and become all that they can be. That's the difference. Now, management is needed. We have to have management. We have to manage product projects. We have to manage things that are happening in an organization. But people need to be led. Good leaders have followers, but great leaders have other leaders who they are working to develop to ensure that everything that the leader is working on, everything the organization, the agency, the business is working on, continues forward, even if that positional CEO isn't there, that owner isn't there anymore, things can continue forward. So we have to develop ourselves, and when we develop ourselves, that is personal growth. And that's a very good and very positive thing, but it's not enough. We have to develop the team. And when we develop the team, we find that there's organizational growth as we move up through those levels of leadership. And then finally, we have to develop leaders. And when we develop leaders, we see unbelievable, sustainable growth in ourselves, in those that we're leading, and in the organizations that we're working with as well. And so there are a few things that leaders know how to do. There are things that if you are working to develop your leadership, you're trying to lift and raise your leadership lid, right? We, we can't stay. We have to move it up so that we can move up and we can lead others further as well. We have to know how to communicate. So how can we more effectively communicate and how can we learn to more effectively communicate. So if you say, well, you know, if I want to take a class, a seminar, read a book, what are some topics I should focus on if I'm trying to raise my leadership lid and develop my leadership skills? Communication is one of those areas. Another is how to inspire the team. How can you inspire the team to realize that they're working on something bigger than themselves, that they're a part of a mission that's greater than themselves, that what they're doing does have the potential to leave a legacy for generations into the future. We have to inspire our team members as we, as we go forward. Lead effective change. Again, everything is changing. And it's going to continue to change as we move forward. And so as we realize this, how can we learn how to be 
effective change makers. How can we learn to be effective in, in managing the process? Because we can manage processes, right? How do we manage the process of change effectively so that people are inspired, so that we are communicating effectively? We have to figure out how to do this. And then leaders take for personal responsibility and accountability. No matter what, as a leader, at the end of the day, it may not be your fault, but it is your responsibility. And we have to figure out that this is a reality when we talk about leading people forward. That you may not have a part in it, that it may not be your fault at all, but if you're the leader, inevitably it's your responsibility. So what can we do to develop that personal accountability that we need to fess up and fix it, to worry about not being right, but getting it right, and moving things forward within our organization as we develop ourselves and as we develop other people. So as we think about those characteristics, we realize that foundationally there, there are a few laws of leadership. There are things that are true. They're unbreakable type laws when it comes to leadership. And one is the law of navigation. Anyone can steer the ship, but it takes a leader to chart the course. Look at that, that's my boat. <laughs> and I'm just confident enough that I think I can get in there and drive that boat. I think if they set me in there, I could figure out what buttons to push and what wheels to turn, and I could drive the thing. Likely into the bank or some other boat, but I think I could steer the ship. But it takes a leader to chart the course. It takes a leader to figure out where we're going, to see into the future and say, this is where we're heading, and this is how we're going to get there. And by the way, leaders don't know how to get there on their own, but they know where we're heading, and they lead the team. They work with the team to figure out how we're going to get there. And so anyone can steer the ship, but it takes a leader to chart the course forward. The law of the picture, this is an important one. We know this is true. I've been teaching my children that this is true. The law of the picture says people do what people see. Now, that's the end of John Maxwell and his sort of quote when it comes to the law of the picture. I've added the rest of this because I know it to be true. I've experienced it, and so have you. People do what people see, and someone is always watching. Someone is always watching. I explained to my daughter as she went off to a summer camp at a place where I know just about everyone, that I took a special trip home at lunch, and she was getting in the car, and I pulled her out of the car, and I said, Samantha, I need you to understand something. There is nothing that you can do at this place that someone won't come and tell me about. There is nothing you can get away with that someone's not going to want to come and tell me about because I know everyone who's there. And I struck the fear of God into her as she went off to this camp. And it was true. And so we realized that this is the way it is. And it's true for us, too. It's true for us as leaders. Someone's watching you. This is the way we live our lives. We can see in the windows. People can see what's going on. And if you're leading them, they're watching you. They're trying to see what you're doing. And hopefully, out of positive motivation, right, they want to learn and grow and imitate and be like you, but they may be trying to catch you as well, catch you doing something you shouldn't be doing, catch you saying something or doing something that contradicts what you say, right, when our actions don't match up with the words and the things that we say. And so this is the way we live life. We can see in the windows what's happening. Got a guy up there doing some Taekwondo. There are some bedrooms there. We can see in. We think we live like this. We think we live in these high rises where you couldn't tell what was going on. But that's not the reality. This is the reality. People do what people see, not what they hear you say. People do what people see, and someone is always watching. And then the law of the world, which we opened up with, this idea that we can only lead people as far as we've gone. We can only develop people as far as we have developed ourselves, that our leadership ability determines our level of effectiveness. And 
the level of effectiveness of others that may be Now, you may have those who want to go above you, who may be above you with regard to their leadership development. But then you're not leading them. They may be leading you. And so we realize that we have to move the lid. We have to raise it up. We have to grow. We have to develop. And so in your packet, there is a quick, and this is just for you. We're not going to share it. There's a quick wall of the lid leadership evaluation. I'd like for you to answer this question. Now, now one of the things you need to understand about the five levels of leadership that we just talked about, those five areas, you can be on one level where you work as an example. So where you work, you may be a level three leader. But in the community, if you're serving in a nonprofit or at your church or you know you coach your kids' ball team or something, you may be a different level. The levels can change relative to the environment and circumstance you find yourself in. Why? Because the relationships that you have in those environments are different. So I want you to pick your work environment. That's how I want you to answer this evaluation. So you say, in my work environment, this is how I would rate myself in each one of those areas. So you will do that very quickly. And then I want you to think about it. what's your next step? If you buy into this, and by the way, it's all true, that we have to grow and develop as leaders, what are you going to do about it? What action step can you write down and commit to taking today that's going to help you raise your leadership with that's going to help you to grow and develop your leadership so that you can help others do the same, so that you can lead effectively. So do that very quickly. Again, that's just for you. Then we'll come back and wrap up in just a second. So just three quick questions then, your total, and then at the end of the day, we're saying, what can we do? What area do I need to focus on? What step can I take to develop my leadership even more than I already have so that I can effectively lead people and continue to make a positive difference? page there are some suggestions that you would want to continue to grow and develop your leadership and you do so by reading books there are three books that are fantastic five levels of leadership which is the content we just went over but you obviously will dive much deeper into each one of the areas and in a sense talks about some of the pros and cons of each of the areas how you might develop and move up to the next one the 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership, which is where those laws, those few that we talked about, there are 21 Irrefutable Laws, so you can read that. And then the Compound Effect by Dan Hardy, which is really important. And the, the Pyramid, the five levels, is an example of the Compound Effect. We never, we don't get anywhere immediately. It's not like turning on a light switch and then within a millisecond the light is on. 
it takes time. No one has found success overnight. Even the overnight successes, if you really go back and study and figure it out, you'll see that it took them years, decades in some cases, to become that overnight success. And what we know and what we realize is these things compound. Success compounds. It's success. Effective leadership is small decisions that we make every day that compound over time. And that's what the, the, the different pyramids and the levels of leadership are. They, they compound. And so we do something in level one, it compounds into level two, and then two compounds, and we move to three. And so that's a great book. It's a short read by Darren Hardy if you're interested in knowing more about the compound effect. So thank you for the opportunity to be here. I'm happy to try to answer any questions that you have or turn it back over to the leading dial. People don't have questions. I'm sure they have burning questions. We've got all the staff here staring at him. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. No pressure. He said no. Yeah. I know. He so he's got me. He's just. <laughs> Doesn't like put me on spot, right? <laughs> you know? I wouldn't do that. You know, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> I think one of the things you talked about, I, I, I know it was a brief discussion and we didn't have a lot of time to talk about it, but you talked about um, getting to the point where productivity where it increases and how it affects the whole organization. I think that's something that we don't talk enough about is, yeah, we want to build your, your individual leadership skills. And we want all the people that are working with you to build their own uh, leadership skills. And I think one of the things that we so far too often, or don't enough, often enough, connect the excellence of whatever organization. Because until you've got that respect, that's a two-way street, and that everybody's working for a, a common goal, and we've all, you know, have that tr the relationships with each other, that hey, nobody's trying to pull the wool over our eyes, it becomes a synergistic, really, really successful, excellent organization. And in your explanation of all the leadership stuff, it's right on. Um, but I just think the result all too often becomes this really, and I think those are the organizations we've seen be successful. Whatever story you want to read about a great successful organization, it's not because of one person, it's not because of two people, it's because there's just been this, this organizational movement where everybody starts to work together with relationships and their leadership grows and compounds. Yeah, that's right, and, and it really leads you up the, the levels to three and four to five level leadership. And um, the, another great book uh, that I just recently read, someone recommended it a long time ago, it's been on my shelf, and I've been trying to get some of these, is The Energy Bus. And The Energy Bus talks about this idea of you know individual contribution and, and how it wasn't enough, but when we were able to pull the team together, because, and, and some of you have been through my, my teamwork uh, sessions, but it, you know, the, the whole foundation of it, as cliche as it sounds, is teamwork makes the dream work. Without teamwork, you know, we're not going to get where we want to go. We're better together. It's just a reality. We can go much, much farther when we go together. And, and again, the, the old saying is if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And so when we pull together as a team, when we build those relationships, when we develop individuals who can come together and work as a team and develop that team, we're going to see significant progress forward. Um, but again, it takes time. It takes time. And so we have to, and, and if you're not intentional about it, if you're not purposeful about it, then, you, you know, it's just, it's not going to happen. It, it's not automatic. Not only does it not happen overnight, but it's not automatic. And so we really have to put the time in if we're going to try to move where we need to move in order to be successful and effective as a leader. Other thoughts or comments? Well, thank you. I'm coming back again in a few months. I don't remember what for. Chris Maybe it's teamwork or something. It's on the thing. What's on the thing, Russell? What are we coming back? Uh, that looks like we have it. I didn't see it either, yeah, because I think it's later in the year. So, but I'll be back, and I'm sure. So, it'll be great if you like what I had to say today. My name is Steve Newell. If you didn't, my name is Kyle Miller. I'm sure it'll be great too. Um, I wouldn't say that. Always so, wishful, aren't you? Uh, so, unless anybody has got time to have a conversation with you, like, you know, if you're hanging around, it's fine. I would say uh, maybe the quarter show will start our Excel staff that with me. Uh, and so, I did want to point out, and I forgot to do this early on, I was given instruction to do this and forgot. Um, if you look on your meeting minutes that we sent out before the meeting, uh, Lori, our assistant technology coordinator, included some links on there 
Um, so if you got this electronic, we go back to where the green check marks are, and then just show you some things where um, you can explore some enabling technology. Some of you guys don't need to do that. I think nobody knows what you do. Uh, I guess Lisa's not here because she, she missed out. Man. She stepped out when you came. Oh, I want to know about that. I'm going to put a, a check by her name, too. Um, so that's all on the agenda. Uh, and I think one of the things that David talked about, I think the time is so important. Because you, you hear about all these things where people say, hey, come and do the high ropes teamwork thing with us, or, or come and do this activity to build your team up. And I think all those things are quick fixes that don't work. I think teamwork, like all the stuff that David was talking about, takes time. It's all about those relationships. And I think one of the things that you know, I, I'm, all, I'm just privileged, I get to work with nine other, I think there's nine people, 10 people in our group now. And I just feel like we've worked together almost nine years now. And our relationships have all gotten to the point where we can be pretty honest with each other and be pretty um, upfront with each other and, and have disagreements. But at the same time, I think we're all on the same page moving um, and moving in a, in a good pace, not quickly, but for the long run. And so I think that a lot of that takes a lot more time. And again, it goes back to relationships that you're talking about. Good relationships don't come easy. Trust, honesty, respect, all those things that take a lot of investment. And so I, don't, don't, don't buy this. Get, make your team work better by coming to that. Tell my event. Tell us this David's event. You can <laughs> um, that is David and everybody. So thank you very much for thank coming, you. everybody. Thank you for coming and hanging out if you'd like. We will start our excellence member, um, ex the excellence network meeting at uh, 1145. If you want to you guys go anywhere. Um, for those of you that don't know me, I'm Jamie Rigby, and I have recently taken a new role. So I just wanted to kind of put that out there for people on Zoom and the people in this room. Um, that I still will be doing some help with providers, compliance, quality insurance type deal, but I um, am now in a new coordinator role. So you can you can call Jen, but you can also contact me for um, anything NUI related, or you can still reach out for provider stuff too. Um, so I just want to throw that out there. And then also, um, I was asked to ask if any of the 10 members that are here or on Zoom want to share anything about their projects. Or if anybody, ISCs, providers want to share any good news or anything like that. So do just holler, unmute yourself, or you know, you guys can just talk. We're just working on remote supports. We got a meeting scheduled at the end of the month. Um, cost people uh, smart house apartment type deal. I don't know how it works yet, but we're going to find it out. So that's what we're doing. Great. Have you ever tried that? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yes. 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 Very cool. Anybody on Zoom want to share anything? Hi, Dan. Is it working? Okay, sorry. Uh, you know, last month we talked a little bit about a couple individuals that got out. Um, we've got, uh, I think, three new ones starting within the next week, and we're going to get them out in the community as well. There's some that we're struggling with, um, but we got our open house coming up this week on Thursday, the 23rd, and we're going to be, hopefully, I'm hoping that a lot of the community and uh, we've sent out a lot of invites that they'll show up. That way we can talk about the good things that we're all doing together, not just here at the center, but as the board and everybody in this field about making a difference in the lives of the people that we serve because they deserve every every bit of a life that we have. But I, you know, I think we're all on the same page that the community doesn't see it that way. So I'm hoping this open house will start opening those doors and those windows that people are looking through with a shaded gaze if that makes sense so if you didn't get the invite you're all invited <laughs> <laughs> so tomorrow night at 5 30 right Aaron? it is oh today is wednesday and it? yeah it is it's tomorrow at five Well, watch me, watch me be wrong on that. Well, you're right. Okay, good. <laughs> Check with Laura. Does she keep you straight? Yeah, but she's not in my office right now. <laughs> okay.
Okay, nobody has anything else to share. 10 members meet back in five minutes or so, something like that. Um, thanks everybody for coming. Make sure you signed in and take a certificate if you want it for CEUs.